you need to th figure out the whys about why you think what you're noticing in the book are things that you're noticing. Well, this year I teach in cycle two, year one, grade three. I have 25 students, of which 18 are on IEPs. Uh, so I have a very large range in re reading ability levels. And I find talk is an important is, component in uh, moving their reading forward because okay. uh, that allows me to help build vocabulary with, uh, within the range of students and to build confidence. I'm trying to build the groundwork on getting students to notice. Where I would start with a single picture book, a single page picture. We're all looking at the same picture, and it's surprising. The, the, same, the same thing as the calendar, like the calendar clips, like the, the cutoff calendar pictures, is they're all getting different pictures, but it's incredible. Every day, there's always, I'm always surprised by a comment that I'm hearing uh, from those calendar discussions. There's, they're noticing things I'm not noticing. They're noticing things that are other students didn't notice or many students have noticed it's quite uh, remarkable for me that's to me and that for them to come in and get to that talk it allows me to get through my okay. attendance all that business of the day where I don't want to waste their time waiting for me for us to start okay, Cody. That's why I do the calendar talk faces, because I want them to go in, in and being responsible for getting to, right to their discussions without having to be rely on my management. So I want them to learn to self-manage. Figure out how you're going to spell that, okay? Then when I get my, my business done, their talk, just to kind of re-collect my kids. Motorboat's a good one. Motorboat's a good one. You need to figure out how you're going to spell It's not that. what is the answer, okay. it's what do you notice first. and what comes to mind because we all notice different things. So it's just, that kind of helps, helps put everybody on the same page. Very subtle language and, uh, and I use those words a lot. We came, the, the wild word for us is motorboat because we, we spotted this motorboat in the back. And what's the caption at the bottom say? Uh, tangled lines. Okay, tangled lines. Why do you think that's the caption for the? Maybe the lines are um, the lines at the end of the um, fishing things are tangled, uh, tangled their, themselves. Okay, the fishing line at the end of the poles are tangled. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you think they're they're trying to do? Uh, um, they may leave. Demele, okay. Untangle <laughs> the fishing lines. Okay, good. You can add your uh, wow word to the uh, to the list. Anybody else want to share? We're going to do a lot of work today in our pairs in our groups. When I was looking at the calendar pictures, what do you notice about something maybe we've read in the past since we've been here this year? I want them to notice, and when I'm selecting those pictures, I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, body language or facial expressions. I'm looking for details that will spark a conversation or can lead to a dialogue about something. It's called a plow, okay, and it was pulled by horses. Okay, so that goes back. What's that? Oh, I always try to do my very best to connect back in order to move forward because I find that when it's a one-shot deal, it doesn't, it's not integrated. And if the kids are not integrating what you're trying to, trying to get them to understand or trying to get them to develop as far as vocabulary, skills, all that, then they can't go deeper when they, as they become but older. how do you know that that would be the, the lesson? But I just think talk's more important than I think some of us ever believed it was. Okay, that goes in here. Okay? Good because that, to me, is uh, a natural state for people. You learn to talk and read and then integrate it into writing. 